This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm gay. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Miles Edgeworth Face Attorney Investigations. This recording session, whether it's this video or not, we're gonna finish up the turnabout visitor. As we can see, we are on the end. There's only one to be continued. Never mind, this is a short case. What was I even talking about? Our Apollo Justice first case was like six episodes. This is only going to be like four, maybe That's five. True. Anyhow, we learned two very important things last episode. One, Shock Portsman is probably the killer. And, oh, definitely the killer. We definitely. saw him do we it. We saw him do it. it. <laughs> and number two, Edgeworth can do the chicken dance in this game. It Apparently. is fantastic. However, I don't think we get to control it for the rest of this. It's March 14th, 5, 12 a.m. Dang, this guy's a workaholic. This guy, like, does sports and works, and that's literally it. Yeah. I'm Mr. Portsman. I have finished processing the bloody water, sir. All right. Let me take a gander at it. Pass it here. Okay, looking good. You there. You take care. Uh, good care of this. Wah! <laughs> Well, if it isn't Detective Gumshoe. End of the line for you, Portsman. We've got you now. Call off your dog, Mr. Edgeworth. Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. We know, Mr. Jacques Portsman, that you are the guilty party in this case. He just whips out a gun. You must be pretty upset getting chased out of your own room. I'd be mad, too. So, I guess you can stay if you promise to stay out of our way. You intend to hide your crime under the guise of a prosecutor doing his job? Hmph. I can see right through your unsightly, paper-thin mask you wear upon your cowl. Haha! <laughs> Who'd have ever thought it would come to this? Actually, come to think of it, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? He loved going to the spa, right? <laughs> the legendary prosecutor who never lost a single case for 40 long years. But there was always this... incessant chatter about forged evidence of that guy. Really teaches me that I've got to stay on the lookout for false accusations, you know? Are you done trying to play mind games with me? Because they won't work. The only thing you should be using that mouth of yours for now is explaining yourself. Although that too will only dig your hole deeper. Either way, your game is up. Well, aren't we full of ourselves? Even though you have yet to prove anything. Mr. Portsman's rebuttal, Supposedly. with an emphasis on butt, because he is a butt. Yeah. <laughs> he made he made a guy drag a basketball hoop up like fifteen, 15. flights of stairs. I don't know how many flights of stairs is up for twelve floors. Isn't it a Could be twenty four. Yeah, it's twenty four. Could be twenty four. And he also killed a guy, which is also really bad. <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. I have no idea what sort of harebrained idea you have in mind, but there's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Besides, how may I ask do you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Look, I feel bad doing this to you, but I've got work to do, so we're done. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but we are not finished yet. Boy, you're stubborn. I suppose you're basing your accusations on something. I'll show you what I'm basing my accusation on. With evidence. My favorite. <laughs> Also, Mr. Jock Portsman is one of the few characters that doesn't have a pun in his name, as far as I can tell. Yeah, maybe they couldn't make a pun. Well, there are a couple, like, Maggie Bird's not really a pun. Because I think her last name is, like, pun on a free bird. Um, and, the, and Maggie's just, they needed a name that could double as, like, EY and IE for the photo. Yeah. My accusation is a harebrained idea, is it? You tell me. I'd say it is. After all. Oh, that's it. <laughs> There's none of evidence. Oh, and what pray tell kind of evidence are we talking about here? Jim was my partner, so you can't say I had a motive for killing him! And? That's it? That's not even an anthill, let alone a mountain. But it's more than enough, wouldn't you agree? Might I recommend that you review what the word evidence means? It doesn't change the fact that the evidence doesn't point to me as the killer. Besides, how may I ask you propose I unlock your door? Hold it. Unfortunately, I believe you have already shown how earlier. Your speculations mean nothing as I still insist that I could not gain access to your room. What should I do now? Should I raise an objection? Well, it's possible. I need to gather a bit more information. What's wrong? Don't tell me all you wanted to do was find fault with my flawless logic. 
This is exactly the kind of guy that I hate. Like, honestly. But we don't Act like people who play sports either. That has nothing to do with sports. Yeah, I Like, know. my childhood best friend is a huge sports person. Oh, yeah, that's true. But, I mean, he's the obnoxious sports guy. Yeah, he's kind of turned into that, unfortunately. This guy. Not, not your friend. <laughs> well, both. Really? Well, I guess I, I should talk to him more. Yeah, you haven't seen him in <laughs> a while. I haven't seen him in a while. Okay, but, like, Portsman, like... He's, I really, he's the kind of person I really don't like, where he, like, this is, like, a huge jerk, like, super self-absorbed, but acts all buddy-buddy. Yeah, that's a lot of people that I know. At, I really don't like school. that. So. Also, his personality is literally just, yeah, I like sports. <laughs> Hold it! Humph, I don't think so. You don't like sports. Oh, and why's that? Because there's a flaw in your reasoning. Are you calling me a liar? So, where's your proof? The saying, evidence is everything, isn't limited just to the courtroom, you know. Humph. You need not remind me. I'll show you all the evidence you want in time. Okay, well, it's probably... Oh, that's it? Oh. Yeah, it's a really short testimony. Hold it! You claim to have had no way to open my door, however, that really... Is, is that really the honest truth? Haha! <laughs> Alright, I'll humor you! Go ahead, shoot! Very well, then. I propose that you use this to open my door. My yeah. prosecutor's badge, or yours. And how do you propose I use this object to open your door? You, that is... It's okay. I know when someone's just grasping at straws. Arrgh! What was it that Mr. Portsman used to gain entry into my office? I better take another look at my organizer. Take that! I believe you were able to open my office door. With the master key, no less. Objection! Wait, wait, wait! Hold on for a sec! I never laid a finger on that key, as you already know. Precisely. You were able to open my door without lifting a single finger. Well, maybe you did, but only to direct. That's right, you used your finger to direct this person to open my door with the key. Who would you not pick? Like... <laughs> You ask this person to open the door for you. You have split personality. Let me ask this in return. How and why would I have the master key in my possession? Huh? Ah, that was careless. Stay calm and think about it one more time. The answer is nearby, I just know it. So, what were you saying? On my first time playing this case, I actually messed up a lot just because I, it was always way- I was felt I overcomplicated things, I was overthinking them. Oh. Where it's like, oh, I don't know what to present here. It's, oh, I present this thing that I already deduced long ago. Right. You would ask Miss Bird to open your own office door for you, yes? Yeah. I uh, kind of forgot my key at home. It happens a bit too often for my taste, you know? But the room you had Miss Bird open at the time was not your own, was it? What? You have quite the imagination. But why don't we ask the girl herself whose door she opened, shall we? Um, I'm certain it was Mr. Portsman's door, sir. I checked the number plate to make sure I was opening the right door, sir. See? Miss Bird backs up my story. Yet what if you had misled her to think fool her into thinking what you wanted? Ha! And how do you suppose I did that? By switching the number plates on our doors, for example. That's right! They do slide out pretty easily. Furthermore, you then used one other thing to give a very strong impression that the door she was opening was yours and not, in fact, mine. What was it that Mr. Portsman used to make Miss Bird think it was my room? Or his room? <laughs> Property! <Obviously> the basketball <laughs> He aimed a gun at her head. Open his door or else. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Even I wouldn't get tricked by something like that, sir. I suppose not. Edgeworth is just as stupid as he existed. <laughs> was Maggie really misled, Mr. Edgeworth? I believe so, and Mr. Portsman used this to give her the wrong impression. Take that! What? The basketball hoop, sir! It's quite the peculiar fixture in any hallway, let alone a hallway in this building. Which is why it left an unusually strong impression on you. It's an object perfectly suited to sit just outside the office of a peculiar prosecutor. It's very true, sir. Because there was a basketball hoop sitting there. I thought the door I was opening had to be Mr. Forsman's. 
there are signs that the hoop had been moved. To sit in in front of my office, to be sure. I... I see. So that's how you throw suspicious on, uh, suspicious on people. Uh, thanks for the tip. But I think your conjecture is just a little off the race troll track. Conjecture's rebuttal. Now you're just spouting nonsense. I had the girl open my office door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. You don't have a single reason to suspect me. That's it? What a terrible... I, I, I like his short testimonies, though. That's, I mean... So he intends to claim his innocence to the end, does he? I'm as pure and innocent as my jacket and my hallelujah pose. And Miss Bird is just dirty and guilty as the jacket she wears. That's Whoa! really rude! What the heck? <laughs> my jacket's not dirty, I'll have you know. I just washed it yesterday. Please calm down, for I intend to show who is the one who is truly covered in slime here. I can't talk. <laughs> Me either. This is a great time to record, huh? And no. No harmonica. No, no, harmonica. no harmonica. No harmonica. Edgeworth is higher class than that. <laughs> That's true. Hold it! Nonsense, you say? Yes, because I'm telling the truth here. <laughs> wow, okay. Hold it! Using the master key, of course? Sure! You have a problem with that? That is what the master key is for, right? Perhaps we should place it in, a la in an elaborate labyrinth of some sort for people like you. Wow, these are really short. Hold it! It's the first case. I know, but still. And what were you doing in your office? I was doing my usual training regiment. Training regiment? Were you going through your law books from start to finish? Mainly batting practice and some weights. Oh, and I jog when I get the chance. Wow, you must be the buffest prosecutor we have! With the weakest legal muscles, it would seem. I was doing my usual workout, so... <laughs> okay? This guy just works out all the time. And the funny thing is, he's not even the most fit prosecutor. <laughs> no. I think Gido I... had some muscles. Gido's not a prosecutor anymore, but there, there are quite a few prosecutors. Yeah. That we haven't seen. Winston Payne actually has a six-pack! <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen any prosecutor without their <laughs> shirt on, so... Although oh I'm man, sure... if if you saw Edgeworth without his shirt, the fangirls would go I'm bananas. I'm sure there's fan art of that. That's true. I think I've given you quite a few reasons, actually. Objection. But, but none of those would stand up on their own. Objection. Then what about all the evidence? Objection. It's all circumstantial! No judge would convict on such flimsy evidence! He seems to be trembling a little. One more little push. All I have to do is find the flaw in his testimony. Well, it's a short one. You see where it is? Now you're spouting nonsense. <gasps> I had the girl open my door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. <laughs> yeah, it's probably that one. You don't have a single reason to suspect me? <laughs> Fum thumbs up. Oh, no. Got the hiccups. Yeah, you got the hiccups all right. I got the hiccups for you bad. Well, there was the basketball hoop that we already presented. Right. Then we've got the note left by the victim. It was under his door. Oh, right, right. And that's not... Un was that under the door that Maggie unlocked? That was under Maggie. his actual office door. Right, but we could ask Maggie about that? After well, that, I was in my room the entire time. He would have found that note. Yes, he would have. Oh, do we get to hear the pursuit theme at last? Objection! This has a pretty interesting pursuit theme. <laughs> That was a lie. W what are you talking about? How is that a lie? This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. A note? It was left under your door. Or did you not notice? And right here it says, But you're out. You were not in your room when the victim came to call on you. So then where were you and what were you doing? Ah! Shall I explain it in full detail for you? Yes, here it is. You were busy snooping around in my room, the very room you had Miss Bird open for you. But th that's just nonsense! You have no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me? Oh, but I do. I have very decisive evidence. No, no way! This is proof positive that you had Miss Bird open the door for you. Is it just the fact that she opened the door? With the mask? No, uh, not with the mask. Because of he 
Yeah, that one. Take that! I had your door dusted for Prince. My door? Ha! What for? Come on, I bet you didn't find anything. You sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything. And definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. Her prints? What do they have to do with anything? Let's put it this way, if she really was the one who opened your door, then her prints should naturally be on the doorknob she touched. Back! Fervor, all the prints on my office door- uh, my office door's knob have been wiped clean off. I can only assume it's because Miss Bird's fingerprints were on it. Don't you think it's time you gave up your charade? We know you stole into my office with the intent of stealing something from me. And Detective Faith found you out. Possibly because he heard sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on leave. Mr. Portsman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. And I had the misfortune to return when I did. You had to threaten me as you escaped. As I said when you had the gun to my back, no one gets away with committing murder in my office. <laughs> it just went so funny, pal. That look of stiff seriousness on the face of the office's finest prosecutor as he makes a huge mistake in accusing me is simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edgeworth just explained it all and he even backed it up. You're the murderer. Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already. And as I said earlier, it's also circumstantial, so full of conjecture. You say you check my doorknob for prints? Well, I can readily confess that I wiped that knob down well. Huh? I'm a little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that you had touched. Which is why I wiped the doorknob down as soon as I could after you opened the door. The this guy's the worst. Yeah. Holy I want to touch a girl's doorknob. Is this guy still in the cooties phase? Come on. Maybe. After that, it makes perfect sense that only Jim's and mine own prints would be on there. You! You made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, as for the note that Jim left me, do you know exactly when that was? For all we know, he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Like, early evening, for example. Are you saying that you failed to notice a note in your doorway? Hey, even geniuses fail at times. I was probably too preoccupied by work-related matters, although that's no excuse. Now that's just a flat-out lie! There's no way you didn't notice this note that size! Ah, but you can't prove that, can you? Say something, Mr. Edgeworth! Back me up here, sir! Ugh, Portsman makes a good point. I can't prove that he simply didn't overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just now as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for us all if I had just told you sooner. Mm. Portsman's alibi. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. Gosh, how'd you know? Because he, Edward, just told us. Oh, right. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. Do you really think it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask around all you like. You'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, yes, sir. I'll go check out his alibi, sir. Be right back. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, I think we're in trouble. It's just like Mr. Portsman said. Maybe he paid them a couple twenties. <laughs> he paid them two twenties. That's all it takes. <laughs> two twenties. <laughs> the criminal affairs department's kind of broke. <laughs> and who who was there? The, the one detective who's like writing his screenplay, and the one detect the chief of the detectives who's always on the computer. Yeah. That's literally it. The guys down in criminal affairs said they saw him at around two a.m. See. All the evidence points to him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. Portsman's alibi rebuttal. Cool. Hold it. Hold it right there. You are correct. It was around 2 a.m. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're spot on with that time. I remember checking my watch then, and make no mistake, it was 2. Ooh, giving testimony like a pro! Okay, so you came back to your office at 2. And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation. Hold it! 
It is as you say, however. Yes, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the coal. So tell me, did you see the person's face? Was it me you saw? It was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. Oh, come on now! I'm sure you saw something. Try a little harder, why don't you? I'm beginning to feel like I'm the one being interrogated here. Oh well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. At exactly that time, I was done in criminal affairs. So you paid the criminal affairs department a visit. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, so you paid criminal affairs to agree with you. <laughs> yup, two twenties on takes. <laughs> right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. I don't know why I came up with two twenties. I was just like, <laughs> I love it because you were like, like Val Grammer, you just paid the doctor two twenties, and like boom, I'm like the doctor. All he needs is two twenties <laughs> to be bribed yeah. to lie about a murder. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's so it was so good. Ask around. I'm sure everyone else will corroborate. Hmm, well, we did go and ask around to confirm your testimony. And it was just as I said, right? Yes, sir. A number of detectives said they saw you at around that time. See? I have the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Ah! Impossible! He actually does have the perfect alibi! What's wrong? Why the sudden son of someone look on your face? Plot twist, he's actually not the killer. That was just a complete lie we saw at the beginning. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Can't you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> I think we've reached the end of the line, and it's time to get off this crazy train. You there! Sir! Please escort the young lady out, but remember, be gentle. M Maggie! Detective Gumshoe! Is there... nothing I can do? There must be a way to turn this situation around. If only I had a clue. Did I miss something that can help me cast doubt on his alibi? I need to calmly think this through one more time, and with logic. We do have some remaining logic. Files in disarray. They were rearranged uh, once before and once after the murder. There's another handgun. It's definitely a Portsmouth alibi with something. Otherwise we would have been able to do it earlier. Yeah. Evidence points to the shelves being disturbed once before and once after the murder. But who is to say that the person who did it the second time is the same as the first? Which could mean that there was another person who paid a visit to my office tonight. Maybe they both work together. Maybe. If indeed there were two culprits, then that resolves the contradiction behind our murder weapon. Despite the fact that there are two bullets here in the room, the murder weapon only shows signs of being fired once, leaving the possibility that the other bullet was fired from the other visitor's gun. Furthermore, if we suppose that the second culprit's gun was the one that was pointed at my back- He is so mad in that photo. I know, he's like, how dare you? <laughs> Mr. Portsman, it seems that I need to amend my assumptions regarding this case. Great! So now you finally come to your senses. Miss- oh, we Mr. Edgeworth! Sir, what are you saying? This has been a big misunderstanding on my part from the start. I had assumed that the person I ran into was the killer, but that may not be the case. What do you mean? The person I ran into was just your average thief. A thief? But, sir, doesn't that cause some sort of contradiction in the facts? Not at all. It simply means that the killer was someone else. And it means that in actuality, two culprits stole into my office tonight. Wh what do you mean, two? It explains both why my shelves were disturbed twice and how there were two guns. Mr. Portsman tricked Miss Bird and gained entry into my office. Objection! Now you're just leading the argument! You still don't have any actual proof, you know! If you could please go along with my hypothetical scenario for now, Mr. Portsman. In the end, if you really are innocent, then you should have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Now then, returning to my scenario, Mr. Portsman was out to steal something from me. Which is why he checked my secret safe and ransacked my shelves. This is the first time. So then, this would be when the files were put back in the wrong order, right? Correct. And then, just when he was about to look somewhere else, who should walk in but his own partner, Mr. Faith? But why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? 
He probably had business with Mr. Portsman, which is why he was in the area. But that's when you noticed sounds coming from my office, would be my guess. Oh, because you were supposed to be away, right? And he must have thought it was odd, so he came into this office to check it out. Correct. And as a detective, that was the right thing to do. But when he came in, he found his own partner standing there. Because it was Mr. Portsman, Mr. Faith probably, probably let his guard down. But Mr. Portsman was not so merciful as to let him leave alive. He waited for a chance and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him. He silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. Oh, there goes the corn dogs again. Yeah. I love the truth theme as well. Yeah, it's good. This was the moment in which the first shot was fired, the one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Portsman wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that because he had also left the fake dying message behind. You're such a complicated troublemaker, you know that? Well, if things were as simple as that, all that would be solved. However, there was yet another visitor to my room, and this is where it gets complicated. There was another? Visitor, sir? Yes, and this other person's objective was also to steal something from me. Now then, even after Mr. Portsman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. However, this new visitor had no way of knowing that, and so... They stole the master key from the security guard's room. And then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed, and it seems that the thief found their prize. The stolen Zero file, right, sir? Correct. Only, just as the thief was about to leave with the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during that brief encounter. So the shelves getting messed up twice in the two bullets? It was all because two different people were doing those things at two different times! Precisely. So now do you see Mr. Portsman? The person I met was just a thief, and it was not, in fact, Mr. Faith's killer. Your alibi for the time frame in which I ran into the other person is now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the first culprit's village visit. <laughs> What's so funny, pal? Absolutely splendid! Your scenario explains everything! Of course it does! It's Mr. Edgeworth, after all! But you know... It still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. Supposing if, and that's a big if, your theory is right, it would indeed render my alibi, which has withstood scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument for which you have no evidence. Your supposition that I was the first visitor. Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth! You can't let him get away with that, sir! But he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I, I don't believe this! Don't worry, Maggie! I'll do something if I must! You know something? I find your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Edgeworth. If the person you met really was just a plain old thief, then why is that person not your main suspect? That is, if your theory is correct. Portsman's Alibi, Part 2. This is way longer than I thought it would Ooh. be. Ooh! For a first case. We what get the super cross-examination music. Super cross-examination? Which it plays when you're on, like, the last testimony, basically. Oh, okay. That thief you ran into should be your real suspect, wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down at Criminal Affairs. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. Uh, can we look at the note and see what time... It, was there a time on it? I don't think... Well, we'll see. Nope, no time. Uh, looks like you're out. Okay. So you think we should be out there looking for the thief? Of course! Now isn't the time to be wasting on dead-end discussions? I don't think it's at all dead-ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? Oh, no, I need another corn dog. No wonder he has to work out so much if he's chugging down corn dogs yeah, like exactly. that. <laughs> I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Don't worry, next case you'll get to talk a lot more. Yay! Portsman's Ally, part two. Hold it! Is it a thief? Actually, no, I wouldn't. W why not? 
That's elementary. The dying message, of course. Mr. Faith's killer very clearly left those letters on the spines of those files. And it was after they were on, on there that the thief stole one of them. You mean the zero files, right? And that's how we also know the letters themselves were a setup and not from Mr. Faith. If the thief was the killer, do you think they would try to undermine themselves? Ah! Uh, maybe the killer just didn't think of that either. Yeah, that must be it. Uh, maybe, just maybe. We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. That happened like two hours ago. No, well, three, three hours, hours ago. ago. They have all they have to do is call up an Uber and they're out. Yeah. <laughs> Uber with a gun. Yeah. Take me to this place. Uber for thieves. It's like Cash Cat, where you win money, but instead it's like you take money. Yeah. <laughs> Once escaped, I highly doubt a thief would linger nearby. Uh, well, you never know. Maybe they didn't get what they were really after. Oh, you talk like you know quite a bit about this thief. Uh, it's, it's nothing like that. I just have, I have no idea about anything. After all, I hate to repeat myself, but I'm amazing and great at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but according to Mr. Faith's note, you are not good at basketball. But hold on, I thought we already cleared that up. Didn't we say that Jim left that note for me in the early evening? If you have proof that he left it at a different time, say, just before he was murdered... I don't have any, no. You see? So I insist again that I was in my office the entire time. And when Jim came to deliver the evidence to me, I was down at Colonel Hurst. Do you think Buddy actually liked this guy? Do you think they were, like, actually friends, or...? No. Uh, I don't think... I mean, we don't know if what If they were, that would be even like worse. Them. Why didn't you go there with J Mr. Faith? Ah, that's because he said he was tired and he was going to take a quick nap. A quick nap. A quick nap? He's a knack for naps. You know those sofas in the hallway? He likes to sleep on those. It's one of his habits. And what of the evidence he brought? They were things related to yesterday's case. Just two items, a gun and a pendant. Interesting. This piece of testimony seems too crucial to let it slip through the cracks. He brought me two items, a gun and a pendant, and they are related to yesterday's case. A gun and a pendant. Yes, this gun, which was the murder weapon. And this pendant, which belonged to the victim. And why were you taking them to criminal affairs? There was something in a past case file I wanted to compare these two to. But all this has nothing to do with this case right now. Anyway, I believe you'll find the long paper trail I left to, be your, to your satisfaction. Hmm, this is all matching up with what Detective Gumshoe found out. So I can't be expected to know what happened every time. I can't expect you to know, can I? Nope! But I guess you can't expect me to take a guess based on logical deductions. Oh, then let's see you deduce. Jim waited for me to leave, and then he stole the master key. For the purpose of sneaking into your room, of course. And that's when Miss Bird caught him red-handed, and the murder occurred. It's all exactly as I had laid out earlier. I know he's lying. I know he was the here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Yeah. Well, we do. But he said that there were three pieces of evidence. Yep, sure. Objection. Only two pieces? I believe the proper phrase is here is, you fail. Excuse me? You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Portsman, as you intend to keep evidence hidden from me. What are you talking about? I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here's a piece I think you should read. Carefully. Ah, it says Mr. Faith was bringing three pieces. Yes, and this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. He- I can't believe- To get tricked up a simple arithmetic! Where is the missing piece of evidence? I- it's- it's the corn dog. I'm eating it. You have it, don't you? Only the guilty would make such a face and eat corn dogs at the same time. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, you don't have to say it, sir. I'll pat the guy down from head to toe. Well, don't come any closer. I'm warning you. What is it, a bomb? This is all part of the investigation, pal. So don't even think about stopping me. This reminds me. No! My corn dog stash. <laughs> hey, what's this? He had this on him, sir. Despite what you said, it would appear that you do have something to hide. But why would he hide something like that? Hmph. 
there's only one reason why anyone would hide evidence of this caliber. Because it would unequivocally point to the person himself as the real killer. <laughs> Let's examine this videotape in a little more detail. For the section of the tape that will drive the last caught nail in his coffin. The KG-8 incident. That's a police case number, sir! Does that mean this video is evidence from that case? Interesting. However, what's recorded on this isn't what's important right now. Let's give the casing a furrow once over. Ah! That's blood, isn't it? Yes, and I believe this is what the good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. This blood is still fresh. You mean, this might be Detective Faith's blood? No! No! You've got it all wrong! Um, I have a cut on my finger! And it just bled and bled and bled! No amount of denial can save you. We have but to run a blood test to find the truth. <laughs> you told us that you had received evidence from the victim earlier. Now you will tell us when and how did the victim's blood find its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious! Was it at the moment of his death? Did Detective Faith have this videotape on his personage when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that! Not even if we were to examine this tape for fingerprints. Yeah! If I had to take a guess, I'd say that the only ones on here that would belong to would belong to the murderous you and Mr. Faith. No! Impossible! I I'm <laughs> Corn <dog! laughs> He ate his whole metal. Passed out. <laughs> did a <it> flip. <laughs> March 14, 5.47 a.m. High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. Edruff needs a nap. Mr. Portsman has been placed under arrest for the murder of Detective Buddy Faith, sir. Very good. And the results we got back from the lab techs on the tape turned out to be real solid, sir. The blood work came back and it was definitely Mr. Faith's blood on there. And as a bonus, they were also able to lift a few of Mr. Faith's fingerprints as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Edgeworth. I still can't believe I got to see your cool deduction skills out outside of the courtroom! I'm impressed beyond words, sir! It was nothing. I'm just sorry you got caught up in a murder in my office. Please accept my apologies. Uh, it was nothing. Really. Compared to what I've been through, I mean. I consider myself lucky that it was only a burglary and a, a murder this time, sir. If it had been a holdup or a hostage situation, I'd have thrown my hands up in the air. I think I'm finally rising up from a goddess of misfortune to just an unlucky person! Something tells me we should have hired a different person for security detail. You know something, sir? That Mr. Portsman really was one corrupt prosecutor. And why would you say he was corrupt? Well, I heard that there was a number of suspicious things related to his court cases. There's even rumors about how some of the evidence he uses is forged, sir. Forged evidence, huh? And they say he even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. Ooh, that guy was a complete disgrace to the entire profession! We never did get around to asking what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah, whenever we got to that topic, he just clammed up. Although, we can be pretty certain it was to steal something. This is just between you and me, sir, but... There's a rumor that some sort of huge organization is involved behind the scenes. Oh? Well, well. With Mr. Portsman not willing to divulge anything, it certainly leads credence to that rumor. It would seem that we haven't heard the last of this. Huh? That Mr. Portsman isn't the bad guy? I didn't say that, but rather there are still many more mysteries for us to solve. For example, we still haven't figured out what significance this piece of evidence has. Yeah, we never figured out what's in the safe. Take that! Um, sir, I don't think there's any mystery left to your prosecutor's badge. You! Might be right there. I think you've solved the case already, Mr. Edgeworth. The only thing left that we just still don't know is maybe this. Oh, he gets to do it. It's actually not the safe, it's the stolen file. Oh yeah. The person who stole his file, the other villain of the night. Yeah, I wonder who it was. And what happened to the stolen pages. I wonder, who in the world was it that held me up at gunpoint? Oh, uh, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Oh, not this annoying forensic guy again, yes. <laughs> I came across this while I was processing your office earlier, sir. This card. What is it, sir? 
Is that a bird or something on there? Is that Blue Corp? No, it's not Blue Corp. Blue Corp That's... didn't have a card. I thought they had a business card. We didn't see Otherwise, it. Otherwise, it's the Mafia dude that tried to kidnap Maya that one time. It's not to kill her. That was a seashell. Oh, it was a seashell. Okay. It's not just any bird. It is the mark of the raven. A free-legged raven. Even you should know what this is, Detective. I, I don't know anything! Oh, it's about that thing, isn't it? The great thief everyone's talking about? Master Mask? Yes, it is the mark of the great thief Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu? Under the mark of a legendary bird, the Yatagarasu is a noble to the end, a modern Robin Hood. Oh, okay. Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagarasu appears and vanishes at will. Also, this music sounds like ghost trick music. Yeah, it does. Although we don't know much about the thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Yadagrasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. The theft is always performed in silence and always with perfection. Once a target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth. Instead, the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found is sent out to the mass media. Along with this single card. Although it has been a while since the Yadagarasu's last appearance. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth! Look, something's written on the back! What? Let me see. It's the location of where the thief put the stolen files. So the person who stole the contents of the file was the Yadagarasu? Yadagarasu. Organization. Quite a few key words are popping up into this mystery. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief Yadagarasu. Looking back, I can't say I didn't see these events coming. But they were heralded. Wow, this is slow text! They were heralded by the incidents that began to occur two days ago. The end. Well, that was a pretty short game. <laughs> Brand new episode has been added Turnabout Airlines. Oh, we're flying on planes, are we? Not a huge fan of that case, but I think you'll like really? it. Really? I, I love it. Because there are flight attendants, stuff. as you may have guessed. Oh, cool. Oh, do you want some more grapes? <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the first case. <gasps> wait, wait, that has to be, that has to be Francisco back there. <laughs> it couldn't possibly be another girl with short no! hair. No, that has to be her. It's Kyrie. I would not object to that. <laughs> No, that has to be her. I would be so excited <laughs> if that's her. From our perspective, Edgeworth looks really weird. <laughs> His body is squished. It's fantastic. Yeah, he looks, yeah. So that was Turnabout Visitor. In terms of quality, it's got... So, Turnabout Corner from Apollo Justice has higher highs, but also lower lows for me. Okay. That last case is boring, but at least they don't talk about panties all the time. So oh, I think it's, I, I I think think it's th a little better than Turnabout Corner. Oh, really? Corner. <laughs> I think the panties one was way better. Just because it was funnier. It was fun. It had way better true. characters. <laughs> so, what are your predictions for next episode? Well, I think Von Karma's coming back. <laughs> Francisca? Francisca Von Karma, <laughs> specifically. I think she's coming back. I think they're gonna meet at the airport accidentally. She's like, what the heck? I was traveling to Germany. What are you doing here? And she's like, oh, I'm here on my own business travel accommodations. And then there's gonna be, like, a weird flight attendant that's, like, um, uh, maybe obsessed with... Boys. Peanuts. <laughs> Just or the possibly. comic strip <laughs> no no like like the nuts <laughs> okay um because they like serve those on airplanes sometimes good predictions good predictions um, and maybe there will be like uh, may or maybe it could be like a murder on an airplane it's gonna not like but not like with terrorists just like um something happening maybe in the lavatory <laughs> and somebody's like, man, you've been in there like an hour. I'm okay. gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Disproportionate much. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. Case two is better than case one, but it's still pretty weak. One well, of the weakest cases in the out. series. But it'll be entertaining. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.